Hello everybody! In this clip we look at the Pika Group, Base Loci, Effective Movable Semi-Ample and Ample Devices. First for the Pika Group, that XP, a normal variety, then we say that the Vari Divisor D is principal at a point, small x, if this x admits an open neighborhood, and a rational function such that on this neighborhood U the divisor D coincides with the divisor of the function F. Moreover, D is called a Cartier divisor if it is principal at every point of X. The set of all Cartier divisors is a subgroup of the Weyl divisor group and it contains the group of all principal divisors. The Pika group is a factor group of the group of Cartier divisors modulo the subgroup of principal divisors. By construction, this Pika group sits inside the divisor class group of X. Look at a toric variety defined by a lattice fan. Take a Cone, small sigma, and let D be an invariant while divisor on X. Then D is principal at a limit point X sigma, if and only if, on the open subset capital X sigma, our divisor D is the divisor of a character function. In this case, we look at the difference d prime equal d minus the divisor of this character function. d prime is again an invariant divisor, so it is a linear combination of our invariant prime divisors with coefficients a i prime. The fact that d prime is trivial on x sigma exactly means that we have a i prime equal zero whenever the primitive generator vi belongs to the cone sigma. This allows us to say something about the divisor class of d equals the divisor class of d prime. Recall that the divisor class of d prime is obtained by projecting the coefficient vector a1 prime up to a r prime via the map q to k which is equal to the divisor class. Now, we denote by sigma hat star the face of the autumn, which is generated by all the canonical basis vectors Ej, such that the primitive generator Vj does not belong to sigma. Then by this property of the vector a1 prime up to a r prime, the class of D prime lies in the image of Q of the linear subspace generated by sigma hat star intersected with zero. So we have located the class of D prime in the divisor class group. This argument runs also the other way around. That means D lying in this part of the divisor class group characterizes D being principal at the limit point X sigma. Here's the Picard group of a toric variety. It is the intersection of all the subgroups of the divisor class group hosting divisor classes that are principal at the limit points. That is how the Picard group sits inside the divisor class group. A philosophical remark. Behind what we just did is a general principle of transferring information from the lattice of unparameter subgroups to the divisor class group. Recall that these two groups are related to each other via the map P. 
from the R to N, sending the I's, canonical basis vector, to the I's, primitive generator, VI. The divisor class group K is a factor group of ZR modulo the image of the dual map P star of P. Now, if you want to send information connected with a cone sigma in N to K, the following way turned out to be quite useful. Pass to the cone sigma hat which is generated by all canonical basis vectors EI such that the primitive generator VI is contained. Then we pass to sigma hat star, the complementary phase of the Wolfland, is generated by all EJ such that VJ does not belong to sigma. And then we send sigma hat star via Q. Okay. We will see this principle again in other situations. The next application of that principle concerns base loci. Recall that for a divisor D on a normal variety X, the base locus is an intersection over all non-zero sections of this Divisor and we intersect the support of divisor F plus D. The stable base locus is the intersection of all the base loci of positive multiples of our T. How can we compute this in the case of a toric variety? Consider a not necessarily invariant by divisor D, denoted by W its class, then the base locus of our divisor is the union of all torus orbits through limit points x sigma, such that the divisor class W is not contained in the image of sigma and star intersected z to the r on the cube. For the stable base locus, this is the union of all torus orbit through limit points x sigma, such that the divisor class W is not contained in the image of the cone sigma hat star. We turn to the various types of divisors. Recall that the divisor D on a normal variety X is effective if it admits non-zero sections. D is called movable if its base locus is of co-dimension at least 2 in X. It is called semi-ample if its stable base locus is empty. Finally, D is called ample if X is covered by affine open subsets of the form XF equal X minus the support of KD plus divisor f, where k is a positive integer and f is a section of the divisor k times d. The classes of these divisors of various type generate cones in the rational vector space associated with the divisor class cone. Here is how these cones look like in the case of a toric variety. The cone of effective divisor classes is just the image of the orthant under the map Q. The cone of movable divisor classes is the intersection over all the images of the facets of the orthant. The cone of semi-ample divisor classes is the intersection of Q of sigma hat star where sigma runs through the fan. Finally, the ample cone is the intersection over all relative interiors of the images Q of sigma hat star. Observe that in the last case we do not have a polyhedral cone, 
This is rather an open cone. In particular, it can happen that this cone is empty. We discuss a bit projectivity of toric varieties. First, a toric variety arising from a fan is complete, even only if the fan is complete. The latter means that the space NQ is covered by all the cones of the fan. Now, consider a toric variety given by a lattice fan. Then X is projective, if and only if the fan is complete and there exists an ample divisor on X. That means the ample cone is non empty. In this context, the following ampleness criterion for invariant divisors is interesting. Look at a toric variety given by a complete lattice fan. Then an invariant divisor is ample if and only if sigma is a normal fan of the divisorial polyhedron D. That means the cones of sigma arise from the faces of the divisorial polyhedron in the following way. Look at directions u minus u prime, where u comes from the polyhedron BD and u prime from the face B. Then we take the cone generated by this direction and dualize. This is sigma B, and the collection of all this sigma B is a normal fan of BD. Let us see an example. Consider the coordinate line defined by Z0 in the projective plane. We know already that the divisorial polyhedron is a standard simplex. Let us determine the normal fan. So, for instance, we take the vertex U1, this is a face of BD, and look at the corresponding cone. First, we have to take all directions from U1 to the polyhedron and take the cone generated by this direction, it's that one. Then we have to dualize this cone. The bounding rays of the dual cone are indicated here. Similarly, we proceed with the other vertices. And then we have to look if this cone fit together to the fan sigma and indeed we obtain the fan of the projective plane. So this tells us that this divisor is an ample divisor on P2. See you in the next unit.